Today we're going to take a look at the top 5 things that I see beginners make in Flutter. If you like these kind of videos, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. You can also support me down in Patreon, so you can find that in the description. So a special thanks to Shannon Galloway for supporting me there. And let's get started. So here we have a super simple project. I have done nothing except removing all of the comments. So the first thing is not separating the main method from your first widget. So here we can see an example what the initial project actually does. Is that we have this main method and we also have this my app. So what we should do to keep this more separated is actually move away my app into a different class. So let's go here. I'm just going to create it right in the root directory of the lib folder. Let's call it something like my app. And this is uh, what you would probably call then your application. And simply take all of this code and do the necessary imports. And then of course that would also mean the uh, test. So here we can see that we now have two files. That is the main file, which is the entry point for the application. And then we have my app, which is the first widget that actually gets used from main. And this way we have a lot better separation of our code. And that's the first thing I do for all of my applications. So for the second mistake that I see quite often is when you're having a quite huge of a build method instead of separating it out into uh, private widgets. So we see quite often that we separate it out to normal widgets where you can reuse into multiple files. But something that is quite nice is also to have a private widgets so you can easily see the flow of that build method. So just to show you an example, going back to the code and we can close down main now as we're not using that. So here we can see uh, this is a very simple application, but here we can see the example at least. So for now we have a text, which is that you have pushed a button this many times and then you have the counter. So let's say your build method is a lot bigger and you have multiple texts and columns and each of those can be separated into its own parts but you don't want them to be classes that you can get from other files. Then what you could do is actually take these two and separate them into its own widgets. So in this example, it's actually the whole column or the whole center. So for example, we can take this whole center widget and we can do extract widget and we can make this private by adding a underscore and we can give this some name. So for example, counter body. So by separating this out, we can now easily see that we have this build method with a body of a counter body where we just pass the counter. So for bigger classes or widgets, you can actually separate it out to different parts. So for example, let's say you have a app and you have multiple parts in that body, then you can separate those out to private uh, widgets. And this lets you easily on a glimpse see how your actual uh, widgets is built because most of the time you are actually looking at those specific parts and here we can easily see that okay something is wrong with my counter then we can go to the counter body and see what the layout is there and if something is wrong let's say that the many is misspelled or something like that and that makes it a lot easier to actually navigate code and we don't uh, have these huge build methods. So the third mistake is actually a bit more abstract but I just wanted it to be out there because this is quite important and that's state management is not everything for a Flutter application. And what I mean with that is that there are multiple parts in building applications and not just the way of how you manage state. So for example, one thing that you want to keep in mind is for example, the architecture of your application so you can more easily manage your application. And for state management, there are a bunch of different solutions. There are MobX, there's Block, there's Provider, uh, and the list goes on. It's probably like 20 or 30 different ones. 
So just pick something. Uh, what Google recommends right now is providers. So just take that and just go with it. And don't focus too much on the way you manage state. The more important part is how you manage the actual architecture of your application. So it's easier for you to navigate, make changes or update your actual application. So the fourth tip is actually also super important. And that's actually testing your applications for multiple layouts. So looking at this application, this is a very simple application, right? So we have used that main body, which shows the counter in the middle. But what we actually have the opportunity to do is, for example, you can move to either use a package to show your application in different screen sizes easily in the same emulator. Or you can use Flutter Web so you can easily change the size of the window or use Flutter Desktop, which is even easier to see because hot reload is working there. So we have no actual excuse for not making our applications responsive because we have so many ways of actually testing that. I will link down in the description a package that I really recommend. You can test that out and see your application in different views. And coming to the fifth and final mistake that we're going to talk about is not using the built-in documentation. And what do I mean with that? So if we go to an application here and we're going to close the widget test, let's say we want to use a list tile in our application. Then of course we use the list tile because it's very easy to use. But let's say we want to make a custom list tile and we don't know where to start off. Let's say we have a design in our mind or we want some kind of custom implementation of it, or that you just want to know how it actually works, is that you can actually go into these and read the documentation. And what the Flutter team has actually done is given us a very extensive and good documentation. You can find exactly how this code is implemented, how it's used, and they have a lot of comments to explain everything for you. And this, of course, you can find also in the documentation on the site. But I find this very nice to have, as it's quite often that you want to implement something, but you really don't know how to do it. But then you can take a look at the documentation of the already implemented widgets. If you like this video, please hit that like button and also subscribe if you want to. If you want to support me, you can check out the Patreon link down in the description. It really helps me making these videos come to life. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.